Hello Craft Warehouse followers, happy Monday. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and see that my video is up and that I can hear on my end. And then we'll go ahead and get started here. Let's see, get this video up so I can see any comments that come along. If you guys are um, joining in, just give me a hello. Um, again, we are making some marbled um, clay earrings and I am using Sculpey today. So I'm gonna be playing with Sculpey. I can see the video, why is it not popping up? I might have to come in, um, catch your guys' questions if you have any after the video. I don't know why my video is not popping up on my end. Ooh, yay, Lisa can hear me, so that's a good sign. Okay, it looks like I got my video somewhat up. It might be a little bit delayed, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. So again, I do have Sculpey. I have three different colors um, that I am using today. I have Nuvo Gilding Flakes, because we're gonna kind of create um, this like sparkle gold throughout um, our marble look. And then I do have a couple tools here, um, just different things to cut with. I'm probably gonna use this knife here. It's got a nice little sharp point. Um, there's a couple different tool sets that you can definitely use in the store that will work great. And then of course my little acrylic roller I will need at the end here. So let's go ahead and pull these guys out and get started. I am just, all I need to do with my three colors is roll these out into like a little snake. And I am working on wax paper. I tend to tape my wax paper down, but um, like a silicone mat would work as well. Okay. And then I did already, so depending on the clay you're using, make sure you read it, but this one does say that the oven needs to be at 275 degrees. So I already do have that heated um, so that I can go ahead and pop these in at the end of the video um, and get them all nicely baked and ready to create some fun earrings. Okay, so I kind of, they don't have to be perfect. I kind of roughly get them out there. I already rolled my green one earlier because I accidentally left my clay out, so it was a little hard to play with. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trim off some of the ends here. I don't need very much, um, but I like to save enough in case I have, need a little bit. And then I like to have this end nice and clean as well. And then I'm gonna start out with one color. And I'm just gonna come in with those Flakes. I want to make sure you guys can see them on the camera here. Let me move these all down. So all I'm going to do is, ooh, that's a big piece. I'm going to lay it all the way across on one side. And then we'll go ahead and roll it out and then see where we need to add anything extra. So fun, you guys. One, if you've played with this before, you know how easy it does stick to your hands. So um, you can easily use some tweezers on putting these down, but I don't mind getting a little, a little messy. So I'm just using my fingers here and I'll wash my hands afterwards, but okay. And one little spot here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and roll it out each direction, wrapping this guy up nicely. And then I'll kind of roll it over to the other side and get everything covered. I try to take some smaller pieces if I can of the flakes here. Now, if you're not a huge gold fan, you guys, there are silver and I believe a copper, um, color as well. So definitely you can mix these in with whatever color you want. Maybe you don't want any of this little like splash of gold or silver or any of that. You could simply use this, the cutting technique and how we add them to um, 
one of our pieces here to create a marble looked earring as well. Okay. So we're done with that piece and we're just gonna go right on next to our next one. I've kind of tried to do a different couple ways of covering these, you guys. I have found kind of taking those bigger pieces and covering as much as I can does work the best um, for me. If you guys have a technique though that works best for you, please share, I'd love to hear, love to know what you are doing. But I tend to like doing this I get a good chunk covered and I don't have to worry about it. Okay. And then we're gonna take that piece off and we'll just cover it where I need a little bit of coverage. That's one thing too, is if you have a little bigger piece and it, it'll stick up and I can just kind of use it to cover the pieces of clay that is shown. I also don't need this to be perfect. Um, It'll just end up adding a little splash of gold throughout my piece, so it's not having to be exact. You know me, if you follow along any of my videos, I'm not needing anything to be perfect. This will is already kind of an abstract look, so. Okay, now we're going to go on to our next last color here. And then today, the little clay cutter I'm using um, is just something I kind of have around my house. But um, we do have some cutters in stores, but there are, if you are wanting particular shapes, I definitely suggest, um, honestly, looking online, there's so many different, like Etsy shops that have really unique designs. So, but we're just going to be using a couple basic ones today. All right, spin this guy, get this other side kind of covered. See, I didn't have quite as big pieces, so the whole back side of this is pretty much bare. So I'm gonna have to come in with some bigger pieces again and just kind of cover it up. If you're afraid of having anything extra really hanging off of it, um, you could even take a little paintbrush and kind of rub it, rub it off the clay, but for the most part, it will do it itself and it really doesn't get in the way. Okay, I'm gonna tap some of that away. Okay, see, I'm done with those flakes. That was so easy just covering those, you guys. Again, I'm only using three colors today. We could easily have done four different colors really just comes down to a preference. I am gonna trim off this edge just a little bit here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one at a time, but I am just gonna go through and try to slice as even as I can um, little coins. I would say they're about an eighth of an inch. You could do thicker if you want, but I want to keep this as tight as I can. Because you have to think about when you lay it out, because we're going to lay this out and we'll roll it, so they're going to flatten and get bigger. So you want to make sure you don't have so much clay that it's going to expand much larger than you want. And we're just going to chop all the way down. Oops. Now, I am not uh, coordinated enough to slice through all these at once. I would definitely get them all crooked. So I am doing one at a time, but I do know that you can easily do this, um, slicing all three of these clay, uh, I call them like little worms. I don't know the best way to call them, you guys, but I call them worms. Um, but I'm going one at a time. Okay, so we got that. Let's see. I might be able to do two here. I guess if I mess up, then we'll we'll roll with the punches. But so far, so good. Okay, we're cruising along now. 
So again, I got those two color blues and that green. I'm really excited. I could even add a white if I wanted another color or maybe another darker blue. That would be really gorgeous. But we're just gonna chop along. And then I have some dough or clay. I keep wanting to call it dough, sorry you guys. I have some clay that I did already roll out prior to this video. Um, and basically what I did was I took half of the Sculpey block and rolled it out flat and we're going to add these to it. And I can either choose a different color than what I'm already playing with, or I can use, um, the same color. So let's we're just going to roll those right over to the edge. So see, I have a blue that I nicely rolled out. If you have a clay machine that has a roller, you can use that too. It's going to get it all nice and even. Um, just really comes down to what you do have. Now, I definitely like the way the blue would look for the back of the earring, so I'm probably going to put it on the blue, but it would look just as pretty on this white here. And we're just going to use it to lay these all out. And I just kind of try to alternate colors. Do what I think looks good. There's no right or wrong. But you do want to make sure that you don't have any really setting on top of each other. Um, you could, even if you wanted to, pop one on the side so you're seeing more gold. And we're just going to go ahead and fill this up as we go along. Let's get some of this color in here. And I'm just kind of alternating it. Don't try to be perfect with it because that's when you end up not liking something, right? So just random colors kind of placed throughout. If you have an area where you're lacking something, you can kind of squeeze one in there. Maybe put it on its side so you see a little bit more gold. And then once we get all these on there, we don't even need all of them for just creating one set of earrings, but we're going to go ahead and roll it out with that clay roller and it's going to spread all the color out and we're going to get a nice marble look from it. Who has tried this technique that's watching us today? Or plays with clay a lot? I'd love to know what you guys are creating at home if you are a sculpty creator. I know some of our stores have some really talented um, people. I know Summer has done some really great things out at the Vancouver store. And I'm probably not going to put all these on here just for the sake of this video. Um, so you guys aren't having to watch me the whole way through. Just enough to kind of get some earrings cut out of it. Keep wanting to stick to my hand. Keep wanting to stick earrings and pendants. Okay. Have you added the these gold flakes yet to any of your pieces? I actually just experimented with um, also adding Pearlex powder using a stencil and creating a pattern on clay. That's really fun too, you guys. Maybe I'll do a quick little video of that um, in the next couple months. Okay. Just going along, I'm gonna try to get as much as I can on here without boring you guys. And I do try to make sure I keep these as tight as I can. So you'll kind of see throughout the time, I'm kind of, some of these need to get pushed into the nooks and crannies. So I do do, I do push them in as I go along. Um, if you're kind of spacing them out as you go along, as like I am here today. Okay. I wonder if we got, we might have enough here to roll out, but I wanna make sure I have enough space. Now I've 
also done an, one other thing is where I just take these and throw them all down so I'm not trying to put puzzle it together perfectly. Um, it really just comes down to a preference, but you do want to make sure they're going to be as flat as they can to this um, flat layer of Sculpey we have below. Okay. Let's add a little bit more. Gonna scoot some of these guys in into the little holes. Has some gold showing here. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out. I think I'll be good enough to um, get a couple earrings out of this. Oh yes, mica powder and liquid clay, so beautiful. Okay, you guys, so I got some of these on here. I have, of course, more I can add, um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead, just take my acrylic roller, and I'm gonna roll these guys out. I got a couple spots where these kind of came out, so I'm gonna push those back in. And I go nice and slow because they are loose at first. And then I'm just going to push a little heavier. Making sure they're all getting nice and mushed into that color below. Push these to the side. Okay. Ooh, I love the colors. How fun is this, you guys? Now, one thing I can do is, if I do have that clay machine, I would run this through that clay machine. But if you only have an acrylic roller at home, you can just roll this as evenly as you can. Um, do make sure you note, I believe on this one, your baking instructions are gonna be for a one fourth inch. So you might have to look at that and adjust your um, how long you're baking things. But I'm about at a 1 4 inch in the, right here I need to get it a little lower. So I'm just gonna come in with my cutter now. And you can kind of pick and choose where you place it. I'm not gonna do that too much because I get too picky otherwise. So I'm just gonna push them right where I want them. And then I have a little circle cutter here I'm gonna come in with. Kind of make sure I get a mixture of color. I'm gonna peel these back. Now I could have also put these closer together and then been able to get maybe another earring out of this, but for now that's good enough for me. And then there's a couple things. You can take an X-Acto knife to clean up your edges, or you can take your finger. Um, I also know if you have a like a little grinder at home, you could let these bake and then grind off any of the rough edges. Um, I am gonna show this as if you do not have, um, yeah, on a pasta machine. <laughs> That's what it looks like. I actually have, I do have a pasta machine. I, so this is kind of, I don't know if you can see on this mach camera. Let me zoom out. So this is what a clay machine is. I do have a little thing that goes right in there. Um, on this one, I can adjust the thickness of it. Um, I usually go on a one and then you do kind of since this would be flat, I would just kind of feed it in there flat and go all the way through on this last uh, this last step. But if I had wanted to create a single color, I could ball this up and run it through this machine. Just really depends on what you're creating and um, doing. Oops, let me zoom back in here. So now we're also coming to a point where we're like, hey, we're gonna create earrings. We needed some holes. So there's a couple different things. One, depends on the gauge of um, 
jump rings you are using, but a toothpick will work. Or also, we have some tools that have little pokey ends, and I've just gone through with those and just pushed it right through. I try to make sure I center them up the best I can. You wanna make sure it goes all the way through the clay. And do it on this one. And I am kind of doing it near the top because you also have to factor in your jump ring needs to be able to go around the thick clay at the top. Otherwise you might have to create your own jump ring if it's not a big enough millimeter. And then we are also going to put some dots, two dots on these little coins that we created. So they're gonna basically look like buttons, right? So, boop. And you wanna make sure that you're gonna be going all the way through on these because you don't want it to end up having a small hole like that. So make sure you push it all the way through that you have a big enough hole opening all the way through for your clay. Um, if you're afraid of it, oops, having those raised backs, you can just kind of Pat them down. Okay. And then they're ready to go ahead and get put in the oven. So I have a small little cookie tray that I do put. I put down wax paper, that, but that's just a personal preference. So I'll put that down. I put this in for 15 minutes for the clay I'm using today. And then, you guys, and just like magic, they're done. <laughs> have some that are already cooked. So, and actually, I almost cut out the exact same colors on these guys as my other ones. Kind of funny. Um, so, they'll get all cooked. They're baked. So, once I bake them, these are going to be for 15 minutes. At, I think I said earlier, 275. Again, please look at your clay that you are using because all clay can be different. Also, the thickness. So, this is for a one-fourth inch. Um, when I take them out, I do let them cool down. I really just let them cool down for about 15, 30 minutes. Um, I go and do other things, so, but you want to make sure they're cooled down. Otherwise, they kind of still are a little bit gummy. And we are going to be adding them to these cute little earring stubs that we got in from Tierra Cast. So I think these are called our cabochon. Um, cabochon earring posts. So I'm going to just come in. You're gonna come in with your, oops. You're gonna come in with both your pliers. Again, I use both a chain nose and a ram nose, uh, or sorry, a bent nose plier. That's just a preference, um, but you could use both two chain nose pliers easily. And the way I made these, I have them so that they're gonna be pretty tight. I don't like a lot of space, but that's just me personally, so. Gotta get that through. And we'll close it on up. And we're gonna, I'm gonna rotate that to the back. Cause I don't wanna see, I don't wanna see where my, jump ring connects. Oops. Gosh, I cannot hold this. Sorry, you guys. Let's rotate it back. I usually do this where my jump ring is on the back side because I don't like it, but we're going to rotate it so I can't see that. I don't like seeing where they do connect. That's just a preference again. And then we're going to come in with one more jump ring. And then we're going to connect our earring post. So earring through the clay to the earring post. And then we're just going to close that up. And again, I rotate my jump ring. That's just a preference. And look how cute that is. I just love this earring post with these, you guys. 
Angela, yeah, you will be able to um, rewind this. I'll talk about it just a little bit once I get this done here. Okay, so I'm gonna open that up. And we're gonna close it on the back side. So I don't have to rotate it. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna one more jump ring and add our earring post. I would show the cook time on this, you guys, but um, again, that's 15 minutes, and who wants to sit here waiting for it for 15 minutes when you could be creating a pair of your own? Okay, so earring post, close those up, and again, I am using our um, stainless steel jump rings. That is just my preference, and I believe I am using six millimeters on mine. And look how simple and beautiful these are, you guys. So fun. I like how the gold really separates throughout it. Um, now, if I roll these even smaller, my pattern would probably be a little bit more tight. Um, also, it's gonna depend on how thick you cut your coins, because remember, that all that clay has to be squished down. So these coins, I did much tighter and smaller, so they're gonna be much closer in pattern than the one that I already cooked. Okay, and I'll, I'm gonna show that pasta machine off real quick. I call it a po pasta machine is a perfect way to call it. Again, it's just a clay machine since I was asked about it. Um, this particular one I have, it has the little lever here, so that's gonna be your thickness and thinness you want. You might have to kind of play with it. I tend to like a one or a two, that's just me. And then, if I was running something, I'm gonna just sprinkle some of these on here and roll them out real quick. Now, if I was running this marbled look through there, I'd want to go across and kind of flatten them before I ran them through um, with my acrylic roller or whatever roller you do have. And then this doesn't have to be mushed up. It just kind of helps make it even. I would feed it through the one end. Oops, sorry. I have to lift it up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work. My thing kind of hits on my table. So it would just go through and feed through and just flatten. And I wouldn't have to do much to it. It would just make it nice and even. One is being the thinnest, Angela. So 10 would be the thickest. I like that one. I'm gonna show you what this one looks like here. I just like how thin it is, it's not too thick. Um, that's again, just a preference, um, or a two works really nicely. Now, if you were doing this with a ball of dough, or clay, I keep calling it dough, you guys, sorry. Okay, let's see if we can do this. I will just kind of put it right there and roll it on through. <laughs> Sometimes you do have to get it caught first. And it will roll through. Nice and again, I like it thin. It just really comes down to your preference. Let me see if I can get it up to a 10 here. See how much bigger of a gap that came down to? So 10 is the thickest, one will be the thinnest. So much thicker pieces. Super easy to use if you do have one. Um, the only thing is on like this one, the handle does go down lower, so I hit on a table, so you will have to have this set off to the um, side. 
But you guys, nothing wrong with this good old acrylic roller. You can get quite a bit done and accomplished and pretty well flat. You just wanna make sure your surface is nice and flat. And yeah, super easy to create these, you guys. And I did do, I didn't put them to earrings yet, but I did do some fun other colors um, just to show off what they would look like in some other colors. Yes, Dorothy, thicker is heavier to wear. I like thin earrings. Um, my earrings are very sensitive to weight, so I try to make things as light and as small as I can. All right, you guys, I love to see what you guys are creating with um, clay. Um, please, if you're a part of any of our craft warehouse groups, please be sharing what you're doing. Um, I know on the art club that um, Summer would love to see what you guys are creating, and we'd love to get tagged on Instagram as well, just at Craft Warehouse. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so sorry that we had to change the dates, um, but I'm glad we were able to make it happen for you. All right, happy crafting and happy Monday.